Howdy everybody, my name's Keith Warren and welcome to Deer and Wildlife Stories, where today we're gonna be in the Texas Hill Country at Drop Tine Ranch Breeders. We're gonna show you some big old bucks and we're gonna attend the Big Buck Bash. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. My name is Frank Petrovic. I'm the owner of Drop Time Ranch Breeders located in Fredericksburg, Texas. Uh, so my deer breeding business is uh, located on about 10 acres. Uh, we have about 15 deer pens and uh, approximately 350 deer in the pens. All right, so most of the people that know me know that I'm not originally from Texas, I'm from New York and uh, came down here in 2002 full time, uh, became a deer breeder in 2005 and uh, really wanted to improve the genetics on my ranch so I became a deer breeder. So today's the last day of August. I'm really excited to have Keith Warren out. I haven't seen him in about 15 years. Uh, wanted to show him the place. I'm excited to have him here. Tomorrow's the first day of dove season. We're gonna have a dove hunt and we're also gonna have a big party tomorrow night. It's gonna be my third annual Monster Buck Bash. All summer long, I've been hearing about the Big Buck Bash and all the things that they're gonna have here. So I asked Frank to tell us about it. So tomorrow night's Deer Bash, I started doing this a couple years ago, basically to bring customers and potential customers out to the ranch, basically to get a look. We do pen uh, tours, get a look at all the deer. This year we're gonna have a, a helicopter uh, tour so people can go up and look at the ranch. They'll actually see a lot of big deer running around. We're gonna have a food tent. And since it's opening day dove season, we'll all be out there dove hunting. It's gonna be one great party that's gonna start in the morning and it's gonna finish up for wee hours in the morning. With all the deer here, I asked Frank, is it which one of these deer is your favorite deer? My absolute favorite buck in the pens is Country Boy. I love that deer. He's six years old now. Uh, he throws unbelievably. All the deer that come out of him, all the bucks that come out of him are just really big, starting as yearlings, two-year-olds, and three-year-olds at this point. Great deer, great producer. Um, last year, we cut his horns because he got too big. He was 38 inches wide. He was almost 500 inches. And I made the mistake of when I cut him off, putting him back in the pen with the other breeder bucks. And a week later, he ended up getting a fight, not having the headgear to fight, and took a horn in the eye and went blind. Uh, we treated him and doctored him for about a month. Um, he's healthy, he's great, but he's blind in that one eye. So he, now when you look at him in the pens, he's kind of tilted a little bit. And on the one side where he's blind, his horns are not quite as wide as they were last year. But he's a heck of a deer, great breeder, and I love the deer uh, tremendously. My second favorite buck is Country Boy 2. He's absolutely tremendous. As a two-year-old, he was 38 inches wide. As a three-year-old, he was 38 inches wide. And this year, he just didn't quite make 40 inches, but my God, did he have big bra tines and big tine length. We had to cut him this past week. He started to get antler infection. Um, we decided for his health to take the whole antlers off. It would have been selfish for me to just leave him on, but I wanted to take him off and keep him healthy. Gladiator Max is another buck I absolutely love. He was actually my first 200 inch yearling and I bred him as a yearling and I bred him every year since and I've sold a lot of deer out of him. But the yearlings and two year olds that I have in my pens out of him are absolutely terrific. He throws big, beautiful, typical heavy horned deer and I absolutely love the way he throws bucks. And um, I'm really excited about him as a breeder in my pens. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UVC Power Sports, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Advanced Deer Genetics, New Dart, Divine Genetics, the North American Deer Registry, Protect the Harvest, Headgear LLC, Southwest Fabricators, High Roller Whitetail's Big Buck Draft and Premier Deer Auction, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics.
Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. This is off our Facebook page from a viewer by the name of Steve. It says, I've been planning on becoming a deer farmer as soon as I retire, but my state of Missouri has made it virtually impossible for me to make my business model work. So I'm considering moving. What state do you think is the most deer farmer friendly state and why? Steve, great question. I want to point out that yes, Missouri unfortunately has come down on deer farming so hard with the regulations that a lot of deer farmers are considering just selling the place and moving out because of over-regulation by government in the state of Missouri. So what state would I recommend that is deer farmer friendly? In my opinion, the most deer farmer friendly state in the country is Oklahoma. And the reason why is they don't even test for chronic wasting disease. If you've got a question or comment about the show and you're watching online, go ahead and post them below. If you want to get a hold of me, all you need to do is shoot me an email, go to the website and hit the connect with Keith tab, or you can get a hold of me on Facebook. So the first thing that I notice is that your pens are relatively small compared to a lot of people's, but that's a good thing. I tell people that the bigger your pens, the more than likely the more crazy your deer are. And they it really calms them down. And this pen of yearlings, I mean, they're pretty doggone calm. So tell me about who these guys are and who they're out of. Well, that, that one big one over there, um, he's actually out of junkyard. Two years in a row, I've gotten really big yearlings out of junkyard. Great breeder. Um, as you know, he's a womb brother to um, Triple Crown. Yep. And he works really well with the does that I have. Okay. How about this guy right here? That he's one great. there, um, he's actually out of Country Boy 2, and you can see how wide he is. That's, that's what I love about it. I mean, Country Boy 2 has been 38 inches wide since he was two years old, close to 40 inches this year, and you can see right there that that guy, how wide he is as a yearling is awesome, and that's really what we're looking for out here. And so look at this. I mean, it's like the, these, these yearlings, I mean, I'm, I just look at it and think, all these deer that we've been showing you, it is like they're... They're magical. They bring people together. I mean, we wound up, we met 20 years ago or That's so right. on a That's hunt. Right. That's and, right. And, and, then, and then all of a sudden we worked together on some legislative stuff and, and then we're out here and I'm thinking, it is just amazing. So as we look at these yearlings, I, I think, and, and he's beautiful too. Now, this guy right here, who's he out of? Well, that one there is uh, actually out of Gladiator Max. That's one of my favorite bucks in the pens. He's just big, heavy horn, beautiful buck. And he really produces some great offspring for me. I've had some big two-year-olds out of him that I saw last year. And every year I get great deer out of him. I absolutely love that buck. Okay. So you've got, you got pedigrees. All these are in the registry, correct? Yes. Okay, so if somebody was to buy a deer. Now, now your primary business model is to sell deer as what we call stalker deer. But you also, because you're genetic, I and mean, clearly what you've got out here, you're selling to breeders as well. So when somebody buys a stalker, they really don't care about the pedigree, but when they buy the breeder, they do. You can guarantee the breeding on these on every one Absolutely, any, any buck that we use as a breeder gets DNA'd, every single one. And the does that we breed with, that we use as our breeder does, also DNA'd. So if anybody buying a uh, breeder deer or breeder quality deer, everything's DNA'd. The ones that we kind of consider stalker, we don't DNA them for obvious reasons. There's no point doing it. Right, right. right. Okay, well, we have shown you these yearlings, and I mean, there's some outstanding yearlings, and they're, they're my kind of deer. They're pretty, framing, nice deer. Thank you. And uh, at, at, at two years old, I can't wait to see what they're gonna look like next year. But speaking of two-year-olds, let's uh, head over there right now and show everybody what two-year-olds Absolutely, like. let's go. All right. Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by G2 Ranch, where quality is our commitment. Brought to you by American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Just shut up and hunt. Hey y'all, it's Captain Timmy Edwin. I'm president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club, and I just got back from a whirly bird hunt. Now some people calls it a helicopter, but I calls it a whirly bird. And we was hunting the hogs, and they was all down there, and we could see them, and we were shooting, them. none of them could get away, because we was up there, and they down here. Hold on a minute, Timmy. I got a question for you. Well, Every hunter I know of would love to do that oh, hog man. hunting out of helicopter. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. awesome stuff, but he I've was. always had the question, is that fair chase hunting? I don't know, Keith, what is fair chase hunting? I don't know, but I thought if anybody in the whole wide world would know, the president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club would know. You'd think so, but you know what? While I was up there in that whirly bird, I guess I never thought of that. Well, my advice to you, until you figure out what fair chase hunting is, just shut up and hunt. Shut up and hunt? Yeah. I like that. Shut up and hunt. Hey, bring that whirly bird back. Good luck, Timmy. 
Until you figure out what the definition of fair chase hunting is, use the hashtag just shut up and hunt on all your social media posts. And I'd like to hear from you. What is your definition of fair chase hunting? Let us know using the hashtag just shut up and hunt. All right, so these guys are two? Yes, two year olds. Okay, man, I mean, there's some pretty deer. Yeah, some Holy great two year olds there for sure. So who's that guy? That guy over there is uh, King Arthur. He was out of uh, Gladiator 2. Gladiator 2 on my does works phenomenal. Um, a few years ago, I had Gladiator's King at two years old, 36 inches wide, and I sold him as a three year old. King Arthur is his name, is actually got a great pedigree. I bred him to 10 uh, uh, does this year. I'm ex really excited to see what his offspring look like this coming year. Well, the, uh, I, I notice as I'm looking at these deer and I, and I see some white deer around the pens, you do have quite a bit of gladiator blood in your program. Explain why that is and how well it's worked for you. Very early on in my breeding program, I actually uh, met up with Henry Woodard. Uh, he was in Big Wells, I was in Pierce Stall, we were 30 miles away. And I uh, went out to his pens and, and saw, and that was actually right when he bought the deer from Hal Birdall. And uh, Gladiator was really two or three years old at the time, and uh, he was phenomenal. He was one of the biggest in the industry at that time. And I believed in him. So um, I basically started using, uh, which was Henry Wooded that turned into Lone Hollow. I started using that semen early on, and I've stuck with it because I, you know, after that, he had a great buck called King George who was out of uh, 217, who was actually produced mixed Texas. And I mean, so he's got a lot of really good deer go back to, you know, the Hal all line. So I just absolutely love it. And um, I've used it extensively in the pens. And, and so this guy right here, who's he now? That's actually Maximus II. Um, again, goes right back to the Gladiator stuff. It goes stuff. right back to the Gladiator stuff. Um, and again, and actually in, in his pedigree, he's got 727 Junior, which everybody mm -hmm. uh, likes in their pedigrees as well. So uh, I really love that buck as well. Okay. Now, that deer right there is unreal. I mean, what's his name? I mean, he is so pretty, so clean. What's his name? Actually, we're naming him today. Really? His name is Merlin. And he's out of Country Boy, the original Country Boy, and he is one of the best two-year-olds I've ever produced. Good I mean, he's probably got 16, 17 inch tines. He's a perfect seven by six, absolutely beautiful buck. And that's, that's the kind of deer that we want to breed in our breeding program. Goodness gracious. So everybody welcome to, I want you to meet Merlin. I mean, so all the names that you have then are really kind of falling in that theme, that gladiator. Right, theme, right, they? keeping within that theme. Correct. Man. Yeah. Okay, well, what a nice pen of two-year-olds. And uh, let me ask you this, if somebody wants to come out on a farm tour, would you give them a phone number so they can call you up and try to schedule a time to come out and see your deer? Absolutely, my phone number is 210-355-6200. That's my cell phone, I have it with me all the time. And uh, I live out on the ranch, so uh, you know I'm always open. Anybody can come anytime. Well, well what we're gonna need to do right now is uh, head on over to the three-year-olds. I want to see the three-year-olds because we got to get this done because I know they're setting up for the big buck bash. Right that's now. right, that's right. And I'm looking forward to that. So let's go see the <laughs> three-year-olds. It's going to be a good time for sure. And, and then we're going to go to the big buck bash. Awesome. If you're ready to get started in deer farming, go to deerandwildlifestories.com and click the Get Started Deer Farming tab. Wow, three-year-olds? They're big. Oh my gosh. Not okay. a big horn, they're big bodied also, really big animals. They're pigs, man. They're, <laughs> mm, they're that's right. up. That's okay, right. so who's that guy right there? Okay, that's actually um, King James. I absolutely love that buck. Um, now he's in here with the stalkers, as well as King's Ransom, who's the other big one over there. Um, because I bred them as yearlings. I don't necessarily use them as uh, breeders at two years old mm -hmm. because I want to see what they produce. So then I put them in with the uh, three-year-olds uh, you know, for this year. Once I see what they produce, then I may use, continue using them as a breeder. So for instance, King's Ransom, two of the biggest yearlings that we have in our second yearling pen are out of hand. So I know he throws monsters and I'm definitely gonna use him again this year. Okay, I wanna, I wanna interrupt and say, that's a, that's a strategy, a business strategy that, that Frank has used 
most deer breeders will not breed a yearling. They just they just won't do it. There, and the reason why is because, well, they want to see what he does in, at two. Because there's a lot of yearlings that we call knotheads or little bitty guys that grow up into maybe being the biggest two-year-old in the pen. But at one-year-old, they look bad. So there's really no telling. When you take a look at a giant yearling, is he going to really do it again at two? But clearly, you made a good strategy. Now, I'm sure you're going to use him to breed this year then. Uh, absolutely. And just to go a further point on that, I always breed at least my two biggest yearlings every year because I believe in my pedigrees. So that's just so not necessarily. I mean, if, if they're big as a yearling, my feeling is they're going to continue to grow big. I'm not necessarily concerned about what they're going to look like at two and three years old. Although we want them to look big, I'm more concerned about what they're going to produce on the ground. So okay. that's really at the end of the day, what does each buck produce? I mean, you can have a beautiful giant buck, and we've seen that a lot in this industry, who doesn't produce well. Exactly. So that's really, to me, the most important part. So if you don't breed your yearlings, how are you gonna know what they produce? I mean, why would you wait until they're two or three years old? Now, I actually did that with Country Boy too. He was not a big yearling, and I didn't breed him. So now he's four years old. I only bred him as a two-year-old because he got the 38 inches, and now I have yearlings on the ground. But the yearlings look awesome, but He's kind of an exception to that. So that's why I'll breed the biggest yearlings. If they don't produce, I'll sell them as stockers. If they do produce, I'll continue to breed them. And then I do look at my two-year-old group and see any of those big surprises that you're talking about. And then again, I'll look at the pedigree, see if they match up with the does that I had that I want to breed. And if they do, I'll use them as a breeder as well. Okay, so there any other breeders in here? Are these Well, I stalkers? mentioned the two. So yeah, the other one there is, um, like I said, King's Ransom and King James. Those okay. are the two breeders in this three-year-old pen. The others are Stalker Bucks. Okay, so Stalker Bucks, these deer right here, and when he says Stalker Bucks, I want you to explain to people where these bucks are going and why. Okay, so other ranches have different strategies. Um, what I like to see my Stalker Bucks do is go in, you know, get sold to ranches where the owners will release them and use them to breed and produce other big deer for the pasture. That's the smart way to do it. This yeah. way, they can enhance the genetics on their properties and they'll have big yearlings and so on and so forth and have big deer to shoot down the road. And when they do that, they also increase their property value and it makes the experience of anybody coming out there a little bit elevated compared to when you're looking at little deer versus big deer. Everybody wants to look at big deer. And so, well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to, we're, we're about done with time right now looking at deer. Uh, there are people assembling over here at the Big Buck Bash. <laughs> Tell them a little bit about why you put the Big Buck Bash on. To make it fun, okay? I want people to see what I do. I want people to get interested in this. So what I do is I open it up to mostly people around in the area that'll come, but I have people coming from out of state. They want to come see what I've done and, you know, talk deer. I mean, this business is, pa everybody that's in this business is very passionate about it. Anybody that likes whitetails is passionate about this. Whether, either even if they're not a breeder, even if they're just a whitetail hunter, to come here, see these big deer, and I get it all the time. I get people coming here going, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, I just, I get a great deal of satisfaction out of that. And that's really part of the enjoyment is to be able to have people come in and look and see what we have here and get excited about it. So the party's kind of like, okay, let's have a great time. Let's show that the deer industry can be fun. And uh, you know, we just, this is the third year we've done it. And it's been great. So, so you're doing uh, it every year? Every year now, Okay, yes. so give them a phone number. If somebody wants to come out, you want to see Frank's deer, and you want to go to the Big Buck Bash, give them a phone number to call. 210-355-6200, that is my cell phone. And uh, he's located just outside of Fredericksburg, Texas. And uh, if you've ever thought about getting in the deer breeding business, uh, what I would recommend, if you've never been to Fredericksburg, it is a great place. Bring your girlfriend, bring your wife, uh, come out here. They're, they've got bed and breakfast here, yep. and, and that's what Frank does too also. And, and so uh, you're, this is a wonderful part of the Texas Hill Country. There's a lot to see, a lot to do, and it starts right here at Drop Tine Ranch Breeders. And so I want to thank you. Sure. I want to thank you thank for you having for us out. out. But, Absolutely. But, but more importantly, I want to thank you for for believing in the deer industry and believing in coming to Texas and being an up, uprooted New Yorker and coming to Texas. <laughs> and I think, how cool is that? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I do, that is, it well, is. And that's, I actually like that. I like what people say, y'all are from New York. I just said, yep, I am. How can you tell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how can you tell? All you gotta do is just listen to right, New York. Right. All right, let's head over and help out getting ready for the Big Buck Bash. And let's I'll go, man, I'm excited about right it. Right now, that helicopter, I know is supposed to be arriving soon, That's right? it, yep, okay, okay. all right. <laughs> We're here at the Drop Tine Ranch owned by Frank Fakovic by Fredericksburg, Texas. 
and we're here for the Big Buck Bash. There's going to be music, helicopter rides, and pen tours to look at all the monster bucks that Frank's got on his property. My name is Philip LeBlanc. I own Triple L Whitetails and Exotics. We came here today to meet and greet other deer breeders and uh, we're enjoying ourselves immensely. We've already been on a helicopter ride and a tour of the ranch and it's been just a great experience. We are having such a blast out here at Drop Tine Ranch with the pin tours and the helicopter tours and it is a fantastic party. I'm just happy to be a part of it. My name's Kendall. Um, I work for Fredericksburg Realty. Um, we're at the Drop Tine Ranch for the Big Buck Bash and this place is absolutely beautiful. We're doing pin tours, um, helicopter rides, and there's great food and music. Say,